everyone. This is Janet Hill at the Rock Island County Health Department. Thank you for joining us today. Today we have with us Neil Ludwig, the administrator of the Rock Island County Health Department, and Edward Rivers, the director of the Scott County Health Department. Um, as always, we have Brooke Barnes facilitating the discussion section. If you have any questions, please put them into the chat. First of all, Nita, let's start off with some Rock Island County numbers, please. Sure, today we do have 56 new COVID-19 cases in Rock Island County, and that brings our total to 11,521 for Rock Island County. We do not have any deaths to report today, so our death total remains at 281. We also have 35 people currently hospitalized in Rock Island County with COVID-19. In Scott County today, the Iowa Department of Public Health reports 16,276 cases, and we've had 161 deaths. Okay, go ahead, Nita. I think we'll hear from you first today. Sure. A Moline school nurse was rejoicing on a sunny historic day Tuesday as she got her first dose of the long-awaited COVID-19 vaccines. We understand that almost everyone in the Quad Cities is eagerly awaiting their own moment to cheer. This will take time. We've asked for your patience, and we know that waiting is frustrating and difficult. Your turn will come. As of right now, we are in phase 1A, which means healthcare workers can receive the vaccine, which is slowly coming into our community. In total, Rock Island County has received about 6,000 doses. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker is expected to say this week that we will move to phase 1B as an entire state on Monday. About 8,000 healthcare workers live and work in Rock Island County, and about 60% of them have received their first dose, and 1,000 have received their second dose. We will continue to vaccinate 1A, and next week, another, uh, another 1,000 healthcare workers will be set to receive their second dose. And as a reminder, the two vaccines being given have different timelines for the second dose. It's 21 days for the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine and 28 days for the Moderna vaccine. The Rock Island County Health Department leadership team is working to fine tune our mass vaccination clinic process. We were happy to vaccinate about 300 people on Tuesday, but we know there are many more vaccinations that need to be administered. We hope you understand that this is a new process for every public health department across the country. We have decades of experience in vaccinating people for flu and other preventable diseases. However, the COVID-19 vaccine protocol includes requirements not necessary for the flu, for additional, in, including additional paperwork and a longer observational period. Our clinics will continue for the foreseeable future on Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Greater Quad City Auto Auction located at 4015 78th Avenue in Milan. These clinics are dependent on the weather and vaccine supply. We will vaccinate healthcare workers in phase 1A and essential frontline workers in phase 1B beginning next week. Phase 1B in Illinois includes residents over 65 and older and frontline essential workers, including police officers, firefighters, educators, food and ag workers, manufacturing workers, correction workers, and inmates. U.S. Postal System workers, um, public transit employees, grocery store workers, and daycare staff. Phase 1C is still yet to be defined, but we expect it will include frontline workers and those with underlying health conditions and will follow Phase 1B. Take a moment and think about your friends and neighbors. How many of them fall into Phase 1B? Phase 1B includes about 65,000 
in Rock Island County's 143,000 residents. This will take time and resources beyond what our staff of 50 people with only 10 nurses can accomplish, as you can imagine. We must rely on our healthcare partners and on our Medical Reserve Corps volunteers to help with this massive and historic undertaking. We can't do this alone. Community Healthcare, a long-standing health department partner, is helping in this massive vaccination effort. Rock Island County healthcare workers can get vaccinated on weekends by appointment through Community Healthcare. Please email COVID, I'm sorry, COVID vaccine at chcqca.org for additional instructions on how to sign up for those weekend appointments. In addition, we are waiting, we are waiting final state public health approval before we can announce a partnership with a pharmacy in Rock Island County. In time, as vaccine availability grows, we expect the state will allow other pharmacies to administer vaccinations as well. We also must rely on your patients, even though we understand it is very hard and your turn will come, we assure you of that. Thank you. Earlier this week, Iowa's Infectious Disease Advisory Council, IDAC, announced its recommendations for priority groups to be immunized when Iowa begins phase 1B of COVID-19 vaccinations. IDAC identified persons 75 years of age and older and groups vulnerable to high risk of exposure or severity of illness. These groups include persons with disabilities living in home settings who are dependent on attendant care staff and their attendant care staff if not otherwise vaccinated during phase 1A. Correctional facility staff and persons incarcerated, including state and city or county operated facilities. Staff of and persons living in congregate settings who are not covered by the first two categories, including shelters, sober living homes, behavioral health treatment centers, and detention centers. College dormitories are not to be included as part of phase 1B. Where public health data indicates outbreaks or clusters of disease among food, agriculture, distribution and manufacturing workers who work or live in congregate settings that do not allow for social distancing. For example, working in a meat packing or a manufacturing production line or migrant workers who live in a bunk room style housing. Primary and kindergarten to 12th grade school staff, early childhood education, and childhood, uh, excuse me, child care workers. Subprioritization could consider persons who work with younger and at risk children in care to better ensure child well being and mitigate impact to the parent workforce. Finally, first responders, that is firefighters, police officials, dependent adult abuse, and child welfare social workers. After receiving IDEC's recommendation, the Iowa Department of Public Health, IDPH, added two categories to preserve public health protections and provide for continuity of government. They are inspectors responsible for health, life and safety, including those in hospital and long-term care settings, child and food production safety, and government officials, including staff, to ensure a continuity of government who are engaged in state business at the Iowa Capitol during the legislative session. We know there's been lots of talk about essential workers being part of phase 1B, although some essential workers are included if their work environments don't accommodate social distancing, others are not at this time. And like you, we hear the national news reports on priority groups and what other states are doing. A recommendation earlier this week by Operation Warp Speed to vaccinate all persons 65 or 
older with serious medical conditions has generated a flood of calls to our department. We can report that at this time, the Iowa Department of Public Health does not intend to change the priority groups in phase 1B to include these recommended groups. The state is not receiving sufficient vaccine from the federal government to implement this recommendation. Neither has IDPH received an indication that Iowa's vaccine supply levels will increase in the coming weeks. Until this changes, immunization in Iowa will continue to move at a slow pace. All local health departments in the state, including ours, act under the authority of the state of Iowa and receive a vaccine from the state of Iowa. So we must comply with IDPH direction and have no authority to act otherwise. Also, IDPH has issued a vaccine shortage order that prohibits under penalty of law or license action providing vaccine to anyone not in the phase categories. Additionally, IDPH has determined that we will begin phase 1B as a state, not county by county. They expect this to happen no later than February 1. However, that does not mean that on February 2nd, everyone in phase B will be scheduled to be vaccinated. Vaccine is coming to Iowa and to Scott County quite slowly. We learn weekly whether or not we'll be getting vaccine for the upcoming weeks. The amounts have varied and in some weeks, we've received no first dose vaccine. Having only limited amounts of vaccine to provide during a pandemic creates an extremely challenging situation for local health departments because it's so important for everyone to be immunized. I assure you that our staff and partners are moving as quickly as possible given the amount of vaccine that we've received today. We ask you please continue to be patient and have faith that we, your local health department staff, many of whom are your neighbors, will continue to work feverishly until everyone who wants the vaccine has it. Thank you, Nita and Ed, for both of those uh, large bits of information that we are gathering right now at this point in our response. Um, we'll go ahead and go to the questions and see if there's any um, comments from our local media or questions for both of you. It does look like we have a couple coming in, um, so I'll start with both of you on this first one. I think there might be two ways to ask and answer this question. Have there been any adverse reactions to the vaccine? Um, there's probably any that we have been noted in any literature, as well as if we're seeing any from uh, locally at the vaccine clinics that we're giving. Nita, do we want to start with you? Sure. In our experience, and we have done three for outside of the medical systems this last week, we had a vaccine clinic for Hope Creek residents uh, and staff. We also did um, a monastery on Friday, and we had our large mass vaccination clinic for healthcare workers, as you know, on Tuesday. Uh, with all of those clinics together, we have not seen any serious adverse reactions at this time. We have had people that had to be monitored longer than 15 minutes and up to 30 minutes. We have had a few people that maybe felt lightheaded or uh, a little woozy, and we did have an ambulance out at our clinic site, and they monitored those people for just a little bit longer. But nobody, thankfully, had any serious reaction, and no one had to be transported to the hospital. Ed, do you want to add anything for Scott County? Well, of course, I've uh, read accounts of adverse reactions across the nation, but uh, in Scott County, I've not been advised of any serious reactions. We do have a waiting area after administration. The standard is 15 minutes. If people uh, report upon arrival that they've had adverse reactions to vaccine in the past, then uh, they're asked to wait for 30 minutes. But uh, thankfully, there have been no significant reactions in Scott County. Okay, as oh, my questions got away from me there. Um, as far as vaccine reporting goes in Illinois and Rock Island County, will the Illinois Department of Public Health reporting lag behind what has been reported by Scott County? Nita? I think you meant Rock Island County, but I yep, I'm sorry, yes, thank you. <laughs> no problem. 
Um, there will be a slight lag time in the numbers showing on the IDPH website. I do know that they are putting those forward-facing numbers of vaccine and vaccine administered on the IDPH website. But we do have up to 72 hours to enter all of our vaccinations given, given into the state system. For example, we gave um, over 100 doses of vaccine at Hope Creek yesterday, and not all of those have been entered into the system as of yet. Um, they are working right now to get all those entered, and they will be entered in that time frame. Um, but that, that does show a lag when you look at those numbers on the state website. Okay, we'll give it another minute for any additional questions. I think I can say on behalf of both of our counties that we'll appreciate your assistance and um, sharing sort of the differences of these next phase rollouts that will be happening between um, Illinois starting potentially next week and then Iowa looking later in at the end of the month, uh, beginning of February. So there are, will be some of those. So how many do you have so how many do you have vaccinated so far? Excuse me. Um, Nita, do you have numbers for, I'm assuming, um, generally speaking, for Rock Island County? Yeah, so generally speaking, like I said, we have the large clinic and we've done two long-term care facilities in our county. And that is about 500 doses so far. Ed, do you, are you able to speak to the vaccinations that are taking place in Scott County? Yes, the Iowa Department of Public Health has begun to post uh, tallies of vaccine administered by county. Uh, the report that I have here is from Monday, and they said they'd post it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but they haven't posted Wednesday yet. In Scott County, there have been 4,615 uh, doses administered. And I think we were told as well, um, similar that there would be some um, backlog with some of those just based on uh, reporting as it comes through the state database and the static report that's on the state health department's website. So that would be information updated as of the end of last week. What about the Rock Island County healthcare workers? Um, do you have some numbers, Nita, in terms of what's happening within the health systems over there? Sure. So what I reported a little bit earlier is that we estimate about 8,000 healthcare workers live and work in Rock Island County, and about 60% of them have received their first dose, and 1,000 of those have received their second dose. It's a little bit tricky to get exact numbers because we do have a lot of healthcare workers that work in Rock Island County and perhaps live in Scott County and vice versa, and at our clinics, a healthcare worker is eligible to receive vaccine no matter which state they live in. So we were vaccinating any healthcare worker on Tuesday. Okay, seeing no additional questions, we'll go ahead and conclude for today. We will be posting this on our website and on our social media pages. Um, please reach out. It was a lot of information. If you need any additional um, clarification or some additional data to go along with that, and we'll do our best uh, for what we're able to provide to you. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we plan to reach back out to you again next week with additional information as it becomes available, and we'll continue to post on our sites and social media for any other updates that happen in the meantime. Thank you all for your time, and we look forward to talking with you again next week.